need to bring this idea that doctors cannot be criminalized, healthcare providers cannot be criminalized. And we want to send a message that providers from all the states and everywhere in this country were here to fight back and say that we need to be able to provide health care for our patients. Soon after the decision, we began to hear horrifying stories. Stories of people who can get pregnant left on the brink of death as hospitals refused to allow doctors to provide life-saving care until a lawyer was consulted. And the stories of doctors potentially facing criminal charges and prosecution for providing the care their patients need. What has this come to? What kind of impossible choice is this to not help our patients or face criminal proceedings? As we look at the depth reach at the deep reach of the Dobbs decision. These abortion bans are completely changing the landscape of medicine. Usually it's not doctors that really go out into the streets and do this type of work, but we know that we can sit on the sidelines, we can't stay quiet. It is important to hear from doctors now because we are in a world where we've seen that we can't rely on the legislators or pass laws to keep us safe. And we have had politicians come into our exam rooms and we can't have that anymore and we have to speak up. We took an oath to help our patients and to do no harm. And part of that is being an activist, being an advocate and using our voices. When people ask me what it's like to work as a physician in a state that has banned abortions in all cases except for the the life of the mother my answer is simple there's not much to be done in handcuffs abortion is a class C felony in the state of Tennessee not much can be done when you are forced to change your occupation from physician to lawyer every time you decide how to treat a complicated pregnancy now when my colleagues refer patients who require termination for any reason be that anomaly be that elective my only recommendation is you have to get her out of state when they call and say she's bleeding but there's still a heartbeat heartbeat what do i do my response is consult your legal service and try to minimize her risk in the interim so essentially that has been my job working against all that i have ever been taught ever been trained as a physician and my hands are tied and harm is being done Let me tell you about one of my patients uh, that I had the honor of taking care of as a medical student. Uh, she was a young lady, 14 years old, and now faced with her first pregnancy. As a medical student, we often had to go in and get histories, and that included getting a dietary log that the patient had to complete. You will never know the pain and place of just disbelief that you feel when you have a 14 year old child, not woman, child look up to you and say, how do you spell hamburger? In that moment, in that space of me as a 25 year old woman, my heart bled for that patient because I knew she had no idea how hard the road would be for her. During the course of that rotation, I saw countless versions of the same scenario and had to ask myself, what am I missing? I had come from similar backgrounds, similar communities, similar cultural beliefs. What made my life so different? After much reflection, I realized the only difference between myself and these women that I had the pleasure of taking care of was the opportunity to get educated and the opportunity to learn something about family planning. From that day forth, family planning no longer became a personal health decision or a social concern for me. It was those things, but in addition to that, it was also economic and empowerment of women. The decisions that our patients make are between us and them, and no one should be a part of that. No politicians, no legislatures, nothing.